It's the creative gift that just keeps on giving. It's AI inside Adobe Photoshop 2024. And today we're going to be looking at two of its forerunners, Generative Fill and Generative Expand. Hi, my name is Jerry Coleman and I'm a design lecturer for UCD Professional Academy and I'm going to tell you all about Generative Fill and Generative Expand. Let's get started. Okay, let's get you introduced to Generative Fill inside Photoshop. We're going to make a selection using a lasso tool, any selection tool will do, and we get introduced to the contextual taskbar, which we could type in a prompt here, but we can just go click Generate and let the AI do the job for us. And we can see instantly it does a fantastic job around this person and the same click generate but suppose we wanted to get rid of the people and ruin their day in the sea we make a selection around it directly and this is a bigger ask when you think and considering the size of what we're trying to remove here in a click of a button we'll get the taskbar again and we click in and again we'll just click generate if i want to generate a boat i could type in a boat and it would try and replace them. look at that fantastic job and even if we zoom into the actual background you'll see how well it melded the two areas together absolutely fantastic generate a fill in all its brilliance Let's take a look at Generative Expand. A beautiful photograph here, but I'd like to have a little bit more um, panoramic view. So I'm going to go to Crop. You'll note my contextual taskbar is here, but this is fantastic if I want to resize something for social media that was in, say, a portrait as opposed to landscape option. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to drag it out manually. Apply. Okay. Option here. I could give it a prompt, but I'm just going to go with basics and let it do its wonder fantastic and if we look to the right hand side we we'll see we get three options that are generated for us that we can swap through to find the right view for which we want if we don't like that we can click again and it will have another go at generating another three images in play and you can choose between which ones you like i i kind of think in the first one let's have a look third no i'm gonna go with the first one here in play yeah the next option if i go to my crop tool here and i want to add in a little bit of sky i'll just expand it back up again Come down here click expand and this is of course the ai doing all the work for us but if i don't if i cycle through these clouds and i'm not particularly happy with them want to put a little more efforts here i can go over and put in my own prompt to kind of jig it to what i want it to be so i'll go over here and i'll type in more clouds click generate and there we have a fantastic version in play and you can see this taskbar comes with us everywhere now this is really annoying but you can click on it and just go pin bar to location so it stops it moving around. Next option I want to show you is the process. If we want to add in an object, say we're going to type into this field, we'll go riverboat. And we click generate. Now, you might think my results are kind of very small and puny in that process there, but you've got to take the context of what we have with the, the uh, harbor over in the right hand corner. If I was to draw to something this side, I draw my selection, I type in riverboat again, click on generate. And yes, it's going to come back with three usable options that I could use here, just out of context in the size because they look ginormous. But I think you will agree, Generative Expand, absolutely amazing inside Photoshop. Let's finish up with a lovely exercise that utilizes Generative Fill and Generative Expand. I'm going to extend out this background here to generate an expandive area. I'm going to click Generate and it does its job beautifully, giving me my three options up here at the top. Just rifle through these. Yeah, don't like that. What's going on with the mountains there? I don't know. Like that, that's not bad. I actually think I'll go with the first one here. I like the concrete side. Might change it, but we'll see how we go. Next one, I'm going to go to my lasso tool. I want to make a selection around the chair area because I'm going to do something that's quite challenging for generator fill. I'm going to type in a prompt of old gray haired man. Press return. And it starts to do its generation here, but I want to see how it gets on with the shadows and the seat, the back of the seat that's going to hide out. Ooh, great job. Oh, that's bad hat, Harry. Let's try a different variation on that one. No. Ah, much better. Like it. Lovely. But look at the generative power of being able to generate that file. Fantastic. Love it. Going to change the background. Not happy with it. Let's go down here. We're going to merge these layers. Okay. We're going to come down here, use a couple of adjustments here. I'm going to change it to black and white. I'm going to put another adjustment of brightness and contrast. I'm going to make a few tweaks to that. A little bit right there. Bring down some of that. Yeah. Change it. Yeah. Will do. Perfect. Okay. Another adjustment. I'm going to put a little bit of color in. I, I, I find introducing a little bit of blue into black and white can actually make it look a little bit colder. And I think it looks nice in its design. I'm going to go over here to my crop tool again. I'm going to just 
even out the image to give them a little bit more presence. Press return, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna duplicate the layer because I wanna add a little bit of blur. So I'm gonna go blur, Gaussian blur. And just, you can change it to various different variants. I'm gonna be quite heavy on the blur on this because I'm gonna blend it into, or fade it into, I should say. I'm gonna to go to the opacity on the blurred layer and just pull it right down to zero and walk it up till I get this nice kind of ethereal effect inside the image. Nice examples of generated fill and nice examples of generated expand. Well, I think we can all agree that AI is here to stay. It's a game changer inside Adobe Photoshop 24, and it really speeds up and gives us such creative possibilities inside our designs. Do stay tuned for future videos.